everyone and welcome back to Brink of Speed. My name is Mike and today we are going to talk about the perfect setup for track day with your Chevrolet Corvette C7 Z06 uh, Stingray Z51 or uh, Grand Sport. And so uh, this is not going to get into a lot of technical aspects of like suspension setup or uh, you know, different size tires and different uh, type of uh, light wheels and things like that. This is basically just going to go over uh, when you get your car uh, and you want to take it to a track without doing anything to it, this is what you need to do once you get to the track. Uh, and I will talk about some things that you need to do before you go to the track. Uh, just because I had an experience uh, a couple months ago, and I'll get into that in a bit, uh, you know, a little bit. But uh, for now, this is just going to be talking about a couple things before you go to the track, and then everything is uh, everything else is when you get to the track. So, with that being said, uh, it's been a while since you guys have seen my face. I've been in Colorado. I want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers and your support for what happened uh, last last month. And uh, you don't know how much that means to me, guys. It is unbelievable, uh, the family that we have here in the Brink of Speed community. I love each and every one of you guys. If you have not joined the Brink of Speed community and like what you're seeing, make sure and smash that thumbs up button along with all the rest of my Brink of Speed community that is awesome at smashing that thumbs up button. Uh, and then uh, make sure you hit that subscribe and the bell notification next to it so that you're notified when all my new content comes out. Um, and with that being said, let's do a cold start and let's get going. <laughs> So as you guys can see, I live right down the road from Texas Motor Speedway. I feel pretty lucky to live this close to a, uh, you know, world-renowned speedway. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that I had to learn the hard way about is fluids. Uh, if you've seen my video of when I went to the racetrack, I just assumed that GM had put the correct uh, brake fluid in this car because it is a Z07 package Z06, which is completely meant to be driven on a track. But apparently it wasn't. I mean, it even comes with almost slicks for tires. So apparently it wasn't. It did not have dot four fluids inside of it. So I went to the track got out there did about probably 10 to 15 laps and my brakes failed luckily i was on a cool down lap so i was only going about 50 miles an hour when i hit the brake and it didn't work uh so my experience with racing and with just cars in general i pumped the brakes and i was able to nurse it back to uh you know where the mechanic was to fix it so the number one thing that you need to do before you do a track day 
is you need to go to a mechanic, a local, uh, hopefully Corvette mechanic. Um, but you know, anybody that knows anything about, uh, track days, you need to go to them and have them change your fluids. And when I say fluids, I mean, not just your brake fluid. Uh, if you own an automatic like myself, I would definitely recommend at least changing the brake fluid to dot four. Uh, if you own a manual, then I would recommend you changing the brake fluid and the clutch fluid to dot four. And there's some other things you can do. You can have it aligned uh, a certain way, if, especially if you take it to a uh, garage that really knows how to do track setups on cars, then they'll change the camber and the toe and things like that. But for the most part, if you just want your car to be basically bone stock uh, and be able to go out on the track and have a good time, at least, at the least, change those two fluids. Uh, if there's anybody out there that has more recommendations to do, uh, be sure and leave those in the comment section below. Uh, and, you know, go ahead and fill people in as far as what they need to do as far as fluids go. Now, let's move on to the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Before you go to the track, double check your tires. Make sure that you have tread life left on those tires. And if you don't know much about tires, uh, if you have a discount tire near you, they are the best company out there as far as tires go. I'm, I'm not being paid by them to say this. I've just had a lot of experience with discount tire. Take your car to discount tire and ask them if your tires are safe, uh, if they're at a safe tread depth to go out and actually do a track day. So that's the second thing. The rest of what I'm about to tell you is mostly in the car, but before we get in the car, I'm gonna continue with tires because as soon as you get to the track, the first thing you need to do to get this tire ready for what it's going to go through, the punishment it's gonna take on the track, is you need to inflate your tire because you want the sidewall of that tire to be very, very strong and stiff. Otherwise, when you take those corners, especially being an amateur, that tire is gonna roll over and it can really mess the tire up and you can do some damage to your wheel sometimes too if you're not uh, you know, careful. And then inflate your tires. Usually, what I found is eight to 10 pounds higher than what is normally recommended. So normally tires are recommended to be at about 32 pounds. So you want those to probably be somewhere above 40. Uh, and then you want to regulate them as you uh, come back from track sessions. So you go out and you do a few laps, you come back, they're gonna be higher than, than 40 pounds. They're gonna go up. So you'll want to let that air back out to make certain that you're getting the best grip that you can possibly get out of that tire. So that's it for the outside of the car. Uh, now let's get into the inside and I wanna show you a few things. Okay, so now the first thing that you're probably gonna notice while looking at the seat and the steering wheel is the seat is pretty far back and it's leaned back. The steering wheel is all the way forward and it's tilted up. So let me climb in here. And we're going to talk about that. Okay, so first thing you want to do when you get into your car to race it is you want to take the tilt button and you want to tilt that all the way down so it's level here. So it's level here. Then you want to take it and you want to move it as close to you as you can get it. Okay, so now it is as far out as you can get it. And basically what you want to happen is you want that steering wheel close enough to you where you can easily, not stretching, but easily put your arm here and rest your wrist over the top of the steering wheel. Right now I'm kind of stretching to do that, so we're gonna fix that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to tilt my 
seat quite a bit up so that I'm sitting very straight up and down. And then I'm going to move it up a couple, at least an inch, if not two inches further. So you kind of want to feel like the steering wheel is very close to your chest. So now let's look and see what, so now I'm relaxing my shoulder and reaching up to the steering wheel and now my wrist is all the way over it pretty much. I might want to go a little bit closer. Yeah, that's, that's even more comfortable. So I'm very close to the steering wheel and what this allows you to do is it allows you to actually have the correct posture while racing, but most importantly, it gives you the most control while you're racing or while you're doing a track. Now you should be able to see a big difference in the way the steering wheel looks and the way the seat is. It's straight up and down and it's very far forward compared to what it was. That is how you set it up for racing. Uh, if you're leaned back and your seat is very far back and your arms are stretched all the way out to reach the steering wheel, you know, way out here, as you can see, the steering wheel is very close now. But if you're reaching really far to get that steering wheel, you're not going to have any control over the car at high speeds. You're only going to have control driving around town and things like that. But when it comes to, you know, coming up on a turn at 130 miles an hour, breaking down to, you know, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, and then turning in, you would not be able to do it. You would lose control of the car. With this seating position and this steering wheel position, though, you will not lose control of the car. You'll feel completely different controlling the car with this setup. Before you go out on the track, you need to take this knob and you need to turn it. There's sport and then there's track. And let it switch, there we go. Now we're in track mode. Any beginner at all, that's all you need to do. Just leave it right there in track mode and go out on the track and have fun. And this leaves on the traction control and the stability control for a beginner. And that's what you want. That is the safest way to go around the track. You won't have to worry about sliding off the track unless you're just crazy and you, you barrel into a turn too fast or whatever. Uh, but as far as like coming out of a turn and getting sideways and, and you know slipping off the track that way, it's not gonna happen. So uh, make sure you leave it just like that. Now, for those of you who are more advanced, then you're going to go right back to this button and you're going to double tap it. And when you double tap it, it gives you a new menu inside of there. As you can see, wet, dry, sport, one, two, and race. And so, let me explain those a little bit to you. This leaves the active handling on, which is also important unless you're very familiar with the car already and you've already raced it, then you want that on. If you go to Sport 2, it takes the active handling off, but it leaves partial traction control on. So you're still going to have a little bit of help. If you're really, really good and you know what you're doing on the track, you can go to full race mode and that takes off the active handling and the traction control. And that's something that obviously, like I said, I do not recommend anyone doing unless they are very familiar with the track, very familiar with the car and they've taken it to the max level before and they have no they had no problems then go ahead and go to full race mode but 99% of us are going to leave it in probably sport one uh, and that will give you the active handling the traction control you'll still 
have more freedom than if you were just in, in regular track mode, but you won't have to worry about wrecking. And that's important in a car, especially like this with 650 horsepower. Now, the last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the PDR camera, which is right here on the front screen. This is absolutely amazing. It's one of the coolest features of this car. As you can see, you've got start recording, uh, define finish line, recorded sessions, choose video overlay and settings. If you go to choose video overlay, you can go straight to track and when you hit start recording and you get out on the track, once you get to the uh, start finish line, you hit the button down there that says define finish line. And this PDR recorder is so smart. It has GPS uh, locating software in it. It actually knows exactly what track you're on. It puts a, a track map of that track up on the uh, recorded session and it will show you exactly what your uh, track time was every single lap. It'll show you what your G-forces were that you were pulling in the turns, your top speed, uh, just a number of different things that it's going to show you that are so neat. Uh, and so that's another thing that you want to make certain is set up with that track overlay before you go out there. I made the mistake when I took mine to the track of not setting that overlay so all I had was the camera view I did not have the the map of the track and all the other things so make certain that you do that before you go out on the track but ladies and gentlemen that is gonna do it for this video I hope you all enjoyed it I hope you all learned something I'm certain that there's probably plenty of people out there that knew all of this and that's fine uh, but there's a lot of you that probably didn't so uh, if you love the video make sure and give it a big thumbs up and if you have not joined the Brink of Speed community, we would love to have you smash that red subscribe button and the bell notification next to it. And uh, until next time, guys, you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you out on the road.